Neighborhood of C-Mac. Shout out my low, spot of low, cuh. Neighborhood on hood. It's a beautiful world. You fight me? Fight, fight, crazy. It's neighborhood net puzzle. Big shout out to my nigga SPI, spot of low. You know, I'm in the black box. Had to come through, tap in, show love one time. Yeah, y'all make sure y'all subscribe. Stay tuned. All that. Point blank, do no subliminal dissing. When I listen, I can tell you never been on no mission. Sticking to the script, don't care if I offend you. Neighborhood crib, the mayor of the look my competition, never seeing him. I done train my mind that I'm going. You could tell by how I walk, talk, I'm a boss. A east side millionaire, hold me what you thought. My life is a movie, they can't get close to me. They mad cause they can't be. I'm everything that they wanna be, yeah. You know you wrong, nigga. How the fuck you get caught without them draws, nigga? I'm an old and exposed, like, come on, nigga. Now that big U cosign is gone, nigga. Black 100, face all bumpy. Egghead, nigga, mama shoulda named you Humpty. I dump V, nigga, you are nothing. We all know the story, you the draws down, homie. DOE, I do my dirt by my lonely. And don't let me catch you with Kentucky. KY Jelly, probably all that you want. And I bet you the booty gun that Ray J was flowing. I heard you a rat. That's why you like to fuck with them. Fruit booty nigga on Clubhouse. Ass up with them. All that pot shit. And that nip shit. It makes sense why you and Cali watching nip dick. On Netflix, wanna be tycoon. Heard about that Wack 100, Jeffrey Dahmer Part 2. Draws down your new name. And nigga, all oh, the irony. Your face look like Warren Fish burned or the butt cheek. It's real rap, all facts over feelings. It's a hit on your name and you know I'ma kill it. SBI say to get him. You know a nigga whack it took. 15 minutes just to hop on the track. Boy, don't get caught with your drawers down. They telling me it's a nigga laying on the bed. Huh, face down, ass up. On my mama, mama. I know y'all see all of a sudden my glasses are like sunglasses. That's I stepped outside to regulate something real quick. I hate the way they look. But they, I can still see just as clear. But I... I mean, I guess they look like shade. Right? Indoors, I wouldn't be wearing no shades. I imagine they gonna clear up. As we continue, how many is y'all familiar with uh, Jaguar Wright? For those who are not familiar with Jaguar Wright, I got to say for the better of maybe three or four years, if I just had to guesstimate, I've been familiar with her presence upon the internet. And the type of character, reputation, and presentation that she has developed and uh, maintained is you would just assume that crazy is associated with her to some degree and it's based on the way i guess her boldness and the general perception from a lot of the high level entertainers she speaks on and the lack of response and those who did respond when she first popped up on the scene a few years ago just like apparently going on rant rants exposing a whole lot of activity and sh from some your most well-known entertainers. And it was like, nobody could quite, you know, pinpoint the method to her madness. What was her purpose? And a lot of people just wrote her off as crazy. And even if you found what she said was interesting, some of the things she said was so bold and shocking. And she said it with so much confidence. You still kind of wrote her off as crazy. I can't lie. But for some reason, there's something about her that always resonated with me because I couldn't explain it. I didn't want to be the fool that was biting on it and just believing in her. And she was just putting extras on, sh making up certain sh Cause she has no problem calling out names and discussing uh, things that are extremely controversial. And what I can give to her credit, and I know that she always qualifies her statements with either I know for a fact or she will explain I bet from my experience and what I could gather from the what we would consider um, circumstantial evidence that I've experienced I bet you this is the situation she'll always qualify or clarify that I can't prove or say for certain or she would state I know for certain I saw I witnessed this is the differentiation she does between the things that she states that I can respect from a person that is apparently speaking a truth that is not um, popular and it comes with some courage to speak. So I, even though you kind of like 
tend to buy into the crazy part of it, I always can give her that, right? So I'm like, damn, what is it? So recently, after being like kind of silent for a couple years, it appeared, or you know, for a while, you know, that you know, the wave she made, she kind of disappeared for a while. And just recently, as of this week, I became aware that she was popping back up, or last week or two. Her name was recirculating. And she was making uh, new statements about new people, Jay-Z in particular, um, accusing him of things related to Pimp C's death that would blow your mind. She's on live, going through records, playing them even outside of that record. And she's pointing out subliminals and, you know, she's on some deep accusational type stuff toward Jay-Z, the Rock Nation, the industry in general. And I'm listening to this, and then at some point she gets on Brian McKnight. And for some reason, that may be the reason. I don't know if Brian McKnight's name was in the title, but I assume it was because there was some reason I was attracted to this particular clip. And it may be because it was Brian McKnight's name in the title because I have a personal um, general connection with Brian McKnight. Not that I have a personal relationship with him, but I have a personal connection with him my whole life. And it's going to become evident throughout the remainder of this story, cuz, but I'm listening to the story when she told my Brian midnight, and I swear to God, oh my mama, mama, why she, 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 she crucifying cuz, she baking him, she getting on his head. And in my spirit, in my soul, I don't know why, while she's talking, I'm anticipating her mentioning Brian McKnight's Seven Day Adventist affiliation. And that's my connection with Brian McKnight coming up. I always was aware that he was a Seventh-day Adventist. And then later on in life, and in recent years, hey! So in recent years, I uh, encountered him at a thing called Five Links. When you get a chance, look up Five Links. Um, five, L-Y-N-X, I think. I might be spelling it wrong, but it's like a multi-marketing, you know, pyramid type thing. Look it up. And he, he was... Um, um, affiliated with that in later years and I came across him but prior to that him being a household name along with Take 6 I always was aware that he was a familiar, affiliated with 70 Adventism and so he's always I have this thing same way when y'all see me in the industry and I, you see I assume that a nigga a crip is a certain type of fraternity like you hear about Masons you hear about Kappa Alpha and all that I always assume based on the way it's supposed to go if you affiliated with certain things when I encounter you there's going to be a certain rapport uh, you know, energy between us just based on that, especially as rare as Seventh Day Adventism is. And watch this. I'm listening to this clip, cousin, while she's getting on Brian McKnight's head. Like I tell you, I am just personally, uh, in, with my intuition, feeling like Seventh Day Adventism is going to come up, or I don't know, it's just in my spirit. And I've watched tons of content on her, had no reason to suspect. No idea, no inclination that she was in any ways affiliated. And then while I'm sitting here listening to her talk to Brian McKnight, and because I'm aware of Brian McKnight's affiliation, and I hear her speaking on him, this is the what's heavy on my brain while I'm watching this clip. And then she say this. A nightmare come true. Two, just want to be on you. Three, Brian McKnight. And he's seven day, he grew up seven day Adventist just like me. Like his family went to Oakwood. You a seven day Adventist, Brian. You fucking better. Oh my mama mama f me right up. I went to Oakwood for a very short period of time. Oakwood is in Huntsville, Alabama. Huntsville, Alabama. I am a seven day Adventist by um, tradition. I was raised as such. The majority of my mother's family is. A lot of my lifelong friends were raised as such. This is what I, my whole exposure to theology, the Bible, Christianity, religion, and life was all shaped under the Seventh day Adventist umbrella. Um, I went to private schools that were all Seventh day Adventists by nature. I was even groomed to be a preacher, a minister. When I went to Oakwood, it was as a theology major in Huntsville, Alabama. I have a interest in the love and marriage Huntsville 
um, reality show based on my time in Huntsville. When I went to Huntsville, when it comes to general people, Huntsville was a place nobody knew about, Huntsville, Alabama. So I was very intrigued when there was a show that highlighted the city of Huntsville. So when she said that, now I realize why I resonated with her spirit so much throughout her whole journey on this internet, talking her shh. We come from the same cloth. And just to let you know how, like, my energy with Seven Day Adventists in the industry is so, like, why I would assume there would be a fondness one toward another once we encountered each other. It's based on how rare they encounter. And I'm going to tell you, from my whole life, these are the few that I can recall that we, we all are just generally um, familiar with because of their public ap appearance or presence. And I can say that I knew before I met them or if I've never met the majority of them, but I knew as a child or coming up that these people were entertainers or public figures were affiliated with Seven Day Adventists. And I always had a sense of connection to them and assumed if I ever did cross their path, once I mentioned that, that that would, con you know, just create some type of connection or bond. But it don't always go that way. Oh, my mama, my mama, I know for a fact when I was a child, the first exposure I got to that, element was little richard little richard used to show up at a lot of our church um functions our convocations and not just our convocations my particular home church was tamarind avenue 70 Adventist church located on tamarind avenue in compton he used to show up there often and he had a, a limousine he didn't rent a limousine he had a limousine that aged with time that it eventually looked like he should get out of it but he always rode in it he had suits that it seemed like he had from his heyday he would come with the full makeup the wig the hair and i could recall because one time being at a, a revival or something and being sitting close to him next next to him close enough when they do that prayer where everybody get on their knees and everybody get up with a prayer partner and then they, you know, the, the main preacher wait for a while. Then he pray over everybody. When they had that prayer, I was so close enough to little Richard that I could remember hearing him praying like in a chant um, fashion. Uh, please don't let me go to hell. Please don't let me go to hell. Please don't let me go to hell. And I was young. I was young as fuck. I remember that. And then I could recall they did a Lifetime movie um, one time. And little Richard was on the stage. It was about his story. And I thought it was fucked up because, because, uh. We were taught and raised that to be to choose to be peculiar. And if you knew the definition of peculiar, it's like different, obviously different, boldly different than the norm. And we're supposed to do that with pride. And I've noticed throughout, you know, the doctrine of the actual denomination that has been a, not the practice throughout the years has been less and less the practice. However, um, Lil Richard at one point, and you watch the movie, it shows his struggle with being a Seventh-day Adventist and an entertainer, which is basically, if you really stick to our doctrine, it is utterly impossible. However, he did, he went through the whole shit, and in the movie, it shows the time where Cuz come out on the stage right before his show. He got all these people at the height of his career waiting. The, the stadium is packed. He come out, and he get his speech about how he was raised up in the church, and he made up his mind he can't do this type of music no more. He want to change his life. And then while he get that speech, he like faint and pass out. And then the whole crowd like, oh. And it's like, even as you're watching this movie, cause you get caught up in the moment. Like, damn, that's fucked up. He passed out. Then the camera like panned in on his face while he was on his back like this. That nigga just grabbed the mic. His eyes popped open. He was like, tutti fruity. Oh, Rudy. And this whole shit went off. So it's like, bam, cause just made a mockery of the shits, right? But it's Lil Richard. Uh, Clifton Davis, if you got to be kind of from back in the day to be familiar with who Clifton Davis is, but Clifton Davis was one of the premier black actors on television um, in the late 80s, probably even from the 70s up into like the early to mid 90s. One of the uh, most premier shows I can remember him being on was A Man, where he was an actual pastor on the show. However, he was an actual minister in the Seventh-day Adventist Conference, and he was very renowned and well-known amongst us. I can recall one time him being on the Arsenio Hall show, and Arsenio Hall trying to kind of get at him like, damn, how's you this preacher, and then you out here in Hollywood moving how you moving and working how you working. Did you just tell God, okay, time out, God, kind of challenged his uh, integrity as a minister, but it's Clifton Davis, uh, Take Six, and Brian McKnight, from what I can recall, his family would Take Six, uh, Megan Good, was recently married to a Seventh-day Adventist minister, which did not last. I'm not surprised. Um, Buster Rhymes, I can recall as a youngster watching, like, you know, he was a hip-hop star. So 
I've always had hip hop admiration. And I've been aware of Busta Rhymes since the leaders of the new school. And there was nothing tough, gangster about his image whatsoever. And I can recall, he's been a star that long. And I can recall seeing a piece on him at one time as a youth that he was raised to some degree, Seven Day Adventist. So like I tell y'all, before I ever met anybody famous, I had in my mind a bond with Busta Rhymes that would always trigger some type of uh, camaraderie if we ever crossed paths based on that. And lo and behold, the moment that I met him, the night went haywire and I, it got way out of hand. But it was all triggered on me wanting to approach him and tell him about, guess what, I'm a 70 Adventist. And before that ever happened, it went crazy. But however, once it went crazy... And I realized that I'm looking bad at the fact that it went crazy based on where we were and everything was going on. And Buster Rhymes came and tried to, like, speak to me to try to get to a resolution of the situation. I can recall trying to bust this bubble and, like, you know what I was trying to talk to you about? And I went to hit him with the Seven Day Adventist shit thinking it was going to break a barrier. And he was going to be like, but it seemed like it put another spirit in him. Like, we wasn't in that type of environment that celebrates that type of energy. And he seemed almost ashamed. Like, I had put him on blast when I mentioned that. And it went the opposite way, energy-wise, than I assumed it was. But he's a 70 Adventist affiliate, from what I can um, recall. Uh, E.T., the hip-hop preacher, Eric Thomas. He also attended Oakwood. Um, Lil Fizz, who just made the news with um, being exposed on OnlyFans, Will B2K, all the... All the, he made headlines a million times that don't draw my attention. But once I became aware that his his baby mama, the Moniece chick, her mama is a Seventh-day Adventist preacher, which is not acceptable according to our original traditional doctrine. Although there is a such thing as an Ellen White, it's hard to balance the two. But um, her mama is a Seventh-day Adventist preacher. So these are the few. The list don't go that further uh, uh, that I am aware of. Magic Johnson was raised affiliated with 70 adventism and then the most prominent one that i say for the last for a certain reason is prince because the way jaguar rice speaks on the industry and then she just spoke about her familiarity with adventism and oakwood i was just curious and i hope she sees this because i there is a very legendary story about prince um coming to huntsville alabama to do a show post his time as a student at Oakwood College, which is predominantly, um, uh, it is a Christian HBCU. It's been classified as HBCU in its later years. When I was affiliated, it, was, it wasn't even considered a university. It was just Oakwood College, and it wasn't an HBCU. Since then, it has grown in, you know, accreditation, and it's considered all the above. But there's a very, um, you know, like legendary story of Prince coming to town prior to me being coming to the town and he came to do a show and, and allegedly he got up on the um, stage and he before he did his show he told he made an announcement he said to all the Oakwood students who are in here which are typically 70 Adventist kids coming from all over the country there the thing about Oakwood is there are multiple 70 Adventist colleges however there is only one black one and so there are 70, 70 Adventist churches all around the world, but definitely all around the country. So regardless of what community you grow up in as a 70 Adventist, as the blacks, it's kind of like traditional, like Bill Cosby on the show, always wanted his kids to go to Hillman or Spelman. For blacks, it's always a thing that like, for your kids to have the experience to go to Oakwood College in Huntsville, Alabama. My mother in particular was not interested in providing me the opportunity to go to any other college in the world. If it wasn't Oakwood, she didn't give a f And I only ended up going to Oakwood, it's a love story, hate to admit it, because uh, someone that I was in a relationship with who wasn't going to be allowed to go by her parents, she was going to Fisk University, and so therefore, fuck Oakwood, I was going to Compton College trying to get on the football team because of Seventh Day Adventist and the Sabbath, I've never got an opportunity to play contact football. Now I'm 17, my mama can't stop me, that was my plan, I'm finna play last minute, right before we got our pass, found out she was going, I followed her to Oakwood. And um, that was a disaster in the long run. But however, um, damn, uh, Prince got on the stage and supposedly told all the people in there, like, if you go to Oakwood, leave this show right now because um, it's too late for me. And as far as to escape hell and make it to heaven, he was like, y'all still got a chance. So apparently 
he gave all the 70 Adventist youth and members of the audience the opportunity to exit the concert before he went into his concert. And I want to know if Jaguar Wright also has heard that story her whole life. But that's a story that I've never been able to confirm. I know another uh, story someone else told me about Prince. He was a, a minister friend of mine. I, re I can't recall his name. I knew him for a very short period of time in my life. But however, he was speaking about his experience on flying on a Concorde jet that can go from L.A. to New York in like very limited amount of time. And the time he got opportunity to fly on it, he said he could recall being on a, um airplane with uh, Prince. Or he sat very close to Prince. And he said the odd thing about Prince was, um, I I'm, I'm, the, the details are scrambling in my head, but the point of it was the person came and asked, you know, would you like some wine or some water? And he said the first time the person came and said, do you like wine and water? And he said, Prince was like, I'll have wine, please. And then um, somehow when the server came back, they had got it confused and brought him water. And But this time when they went to offer the water instead of the wine, he said the, the same Prince who said, I'll have wine, please. He said this time when the, uh, they said, here, here goes the water, he was, he was like, I said I'll have wine, bitch. Like a whole nother voice, deep spirit. And you know, with his musical talent, you his, one of his main things to appreciate is his vocal range. How he can have the most faint falsetto, but the most strongest tenor baritone tones coming out from the same voice within the same bar. He will run the octave scale in a, a way that not many can do. And it's deep because um, if you go with the story we taught at Seventh Day Adventist, <laughs> Lucifer was quite similar in his vocal ability. But I've, I've, I've grown a new appreciation for what it is that Jaguar Wright is to us upon this internet, a new interest, and I knew there was something about what, um, what she was presenting. I knew there was a, something that resonated with me that I could not quite put my finger on, and now that I realized Seven Day Adventism, and everything that comes with it. I know how well absorbed she is in the subjects that she's familiar with. So one thing that I am extremely familiar with is 70 Adventism. And I know that it's something we can relate to that a lot of people, there's subjects and words that we can utilize like Maranatha and things of the nature with, they might transcend, but just mentioning Ellen White, the um, Protestant Reformation, Peterson Hall, you know, um, it's just things, and I, from everything else, her having experience with the industry, being an outcast black sheep, I can relate from there, but then that's a, just another deep uh, perspective. Shout out to her and all those that know the journey that I am speaking of. I still feel like we family to some degree, although I don't even subscribe to a, the doctrine as I once did. On my mama, mama, God bless, Pastor Stephen D. D. Lewis too, my mentor, my big bro. We thugging with you. Love you, bro. I'm easy. I'm easy. I'm easy. Bay Mac G Way. Get money, y'all. For death, though, we do. Spot a low. <laughs> the West Camp. Spinning the World Wide Web. Yo, spider come through on a low late Don't take her on no date And the 08 wanna see if she got paper to donate I'm so hard to locate That's what the hoe hate But I'm so great in bed, baby Daddy gotta rotate Just fucked off 10 G's But it ain't that important If I ain't had to go to court I would've made that this morning Matter of fact Paid more than that for performing one song My dough loan cause I rap my records Is Erta Rico Commit actual acts of extorting Place the wholesale order and jack the jack for the Jordans In New York in the projects Chilling in the back of the buildings Where I chop with the hood heads and chat with the children I'm young and I'm rich I'm black and I'm brilliant On track for the trillions To be stacked to the ceiling Until then I spend thousands and mash for the millions Get cash for the killing Got it bad for the billions Nice and tight, 
tight I hit the cush spot twice a night And sometimes even thrice if the price is right I like variety, they tell me it's the spice of life She say I'm sweet and sour every time I slice your wife SPI, your dirt bag to the world end Nigga, don't get dick deep down in somebody, girlfriend You speaking on me and it's tweaking me a little But if you think you're sneaking on me, homie, she gon' be a widow I love females, they help push the campaign No brain don't make it rain or buy bitches champagne More money, more problems, don't need the propaganda What popped out in Vegas don't lead to Tropicana What happened in Atlanta don't need to be repeated So them pictures on your camera phone need to be deleted Let's go! Neo, but I know he know Me, him, and Eero With ten hoes in Rio With hard for the ESO I squad with the CO No six dudes chemo And show line me go I can't say I put in a gang of work with ego But me and Cuz for sure the pass for a ego I spent some time on the grind with the Rezo 24 months just to end up with zero Even with a belt on, the khaki still be low I'm a head honcho, I used to flow with Nebo But he chose to toad on Lil' Man and Bezo Had to let him go right after we met Sebo From California with the most gorgeous green grow I'm loony as old dog and nutty as Nino All spots covered from dominoes to CeeLo The death door, the lime mold to a Liso She could be familiar with, I know she'll know about, uh, I said Peterson Hall, but then, uh, damn, the Blakely Center, that going to that cafeteria, the veggie food, uh, I forget the, 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 uh, the fucking, um, name of the female, uh, freshman dorm. Peterson Hall was the male dorm, uh, going to that bunk skate ring, cross street, <laughs> university drive, going up to the rock quarry, dumping guns. I remember being in Huntsville, Alabama, one of the activities I participated in with my partners was going up to the Rock Quarry, which was this area up under this road that was all out in the woods late night, and you finally get up to this area that was kind of like high, they called it the Rock Quarry, and I remember somebody had an AK, we went up there to dump it, cuz, and I remember my boy Buck, Matthew Gillum, we was taking turns, me and him and a few more people dumping the gun off into the nowhere, into the woods. I remember standing right next to Cuz while he was dumping that motherfucking Cuz and a shell jumped out and went in my collar, Cuz, and I thought he shot me, Cuz. He was like, boy, you talking about a reaction, flip-flopping, and woo. My boy still born from, uh, he from New York, but he went to Oakwood, also went to Pine Forge. Pine Forge is another institution affiliated with Seventh-day Adventism, which is a black boarding school in Pennsylvania that I had the opportunity to speak at a week of prayer due to my boy Damon Leggett a few years back. It's another thing you hear about all your life being in California. Even if you never leave, you hear about Pine Forge like you hear about Oakwood. Some of your friends even get the opportunity to go to Pine Forge. You come back, you get reports of Pine Forge. So I know she's familiar with Pine Forge. Um, like I say, convocations, the Pathfinders. I was a Pathfinder. Just other things that you know that would be, and it's a tons and tons and tons and tons of them. Snake wasn't that puzzle. Big shout out to my nigga SPI, Spotter Low. You know, I'm in the black box. Had to come through, tap in, show love one time. Yeah, y'all make sure y'all subscribe. Stay tuned. All that.